Monroeville Convention Center and hello Comic Con. Steel City Comic Con. That is our destination for today. Days with Jordan the Lion, it begins right now. So John Moxley, the wrestler, he's going to be here this weekend. Same with Undertaker. Undertaker's not here till tomorrow, though. The dead man. There's Johnny. And the dark-haired guy is John Heater, who was Napoleon Dynamite. Looks a lot different. There's Michael Bean from First Terminator. Also, Doug Stanhope's neighbor. Doug Stanhope said he is one of the funniest people of all time. All these people are cheering and clapping because Steve Burns finally showed up from Blue's Clues. I would not have guessed that he would be the, uh, the hot topic for today. Blue's Clues. It was a little after my time. Steve Burns. I couldn't get my camera ready fast enough, but everybody, when they saw that door opening, started chanting, Steve, 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 Steve. He's scouting something. Every time I see some crazy looking guy with a white beard, I think it's Randy Quaid. And there's Cindy Morgan, who is in Caddyshack as Lacey Underall. Here signing autographs. It's the Mario Brothers of barbecue sauce. It is hot. Here's Tom Savini's booth. I'm gonna get a signed poster or photo from him, but look at all the cool stuff. You know, he's got, he's been an actor in a lot of stuff. He's done the special effects makeup on a lot of stuff. I remember him from Day of the Dead. Was it Day of the Dead or Dawn of the Dead? I see you, Chocolate Man. And he was on The Simpsons. So here's the cool stuff he has. And unlike everybody else, he actually is not charging. If you buy uh, an autograph poster, the photo with him comes free. See, he's actually doing photos free if you purchase something. He's the only one I found so far doing that. Man, too many choices. I'm not sure which one to go with. Tom, which one should I go with here? Well, the best one is that one. That is pretty good. I have to go with Dawn of the Dead. I can't help myself. All right. I hope I don't sound like a jerk. I, I didn't mean to by asking him which one I should get. And then when he showed me, I went with a different one. I liked the one he showed me, but I just, as I thought about it, I'm like, man, I probably really, really would want to see that Dawn of the Dead in my house. So <laughs> I hope I didn't come off like a jerk to him. Now look at it. They're all waiting for Billy Zabka, Cobra Kai. Good line. Wow. Here's Edward Furlong's booth from Pecker and Terminator 2. And it looks like this line is for Paul Abdul. I was actually considering doing this one. I, I don't know if I need an autograph, but I would like to get a photo with her. So tomorrow, Chevy Chase will be on the left line and Beverly D'Angelo will be on the right line. And then I forget, I think like 5 o'clock, 5.30 or something, they're doing dual photos, posed photos, so I signed up for that together. He's also in Cobra Kai. Cal, we have a meeting. I want to go see some of the panels. I ain't afraid of no ghosts. Apparently he wants to see Vicki Lawrence talk about Mama's family also. any real person that you've known? Well, you know, I was only 24 when I started doing that, so I uh, would have to say mother-in-laws that I have known. <laughs> Mothers that I have known. Yeah, my mom called me one night after the show aired, and there was a family sketch on the Burnett show, and she called, and she said, you take that old lady way too seriously. And I thought, oh, I guess I really hit the nerve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, and I had a southern mother-in-law for a nanosecond. I was married for 10 minutes. <laughs>
to a songwriter named Bobby Russell, and um, literally 10 minutes. And uh, I had a southern mother in law. So, yeah, I would say I got a lot of them. You know, and then basically, the, you know, that part was written for Carol. And they uh, had planned on getting a guest star to play Eunice, but Carol said, I want to be Eunice, and I want Vicky to play Mama. The writers were very upset. They were mortified that we, and then she said, I want a good Southern. Now they were really pissed off. <laughs> and the first time they saw us do it, they threw down their pads and pencils and stormed out. They said, you ruined it. You ruined the sketch. What was the yeah. first sketch like? What was so it? I was just basically, I was going to say, I was trying to do like an old version of what Carol was doing. You know, an old version of units. Sorry. But so, as far as like the acting, the singing, you do it both, you do it so well. Do you consider yourself an actor that sings or a singer that acts? Oh, I, you know, I do a little singing. I don't think. Oh, come on. Yeah. I don't want to bore the crap out of people, so I only sing a couple songs in my show. Yeah, but if you've had a juggernaut like the Night of Lights around in Georgia, oh, yeah. Yeah. How did that song come about? Well, the guy that I was married to for 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> like the only good thing that came out of the whole dang marriage was that he wrote this song that he hated. And I said, it's a smash. And he said, well, then you do the demo, which I did. Uh, he took it out. We took it to Hollywood. His producer who said, this is pretty good. He tried to give it to everybody. He was going to call Liza Minnelli. I said, Liza Minnelli is not right for this one. Um, and he called Cher because he was Cher's producer. Cher never heard the song. Sonny heard it. He said, this song sucks. <laughs> and it'll offend the entire southern half of the country. So anyway, finally, his producer just threw up his hands, literally, and said, let's just go in the studio and go with Vicky. So that's how it happened. I wrote her a fan letter and told her that I looked like her because everybody said I looked like her. Uh, so I, my mom said, write a fan letter. So I, I was busy writing to all the young guys that were on TV at the time. I was a, I was a fan girl like, like you guys are. And I would write to all the young guys that were on TV back in the day, like Paul Peterson and uh, who else was I in love with? Who was the guy on the right home? Uh, the darlings, John, no, no, uh, darling. John, Johnny, Johnny Crawford. Yes, uh, Bobby Sherman. Uh, who else did they do? Cassidy. Who? David Cassidy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a little later. I mean, yeah, I, later. You know, I'm old. Yeah. So <laughs> young. But you don't even remember. Baby oh, and okay. Bobby Rydell. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, so I was busy writing to all the guys, and my mom said, right, will you just write to Carol? So I wrote, wrote her, she um, got the letter. Uh, I was gonna be in a contest where I, in Inglewood, California, where I grew up, called Miss Fireball. So I sent her a picture from the contest and said, everybody says I look like you, I hope to get to meet you someday. She took my dad's name out of the article. She called, called me on the phone, said I wanna come see you in this contest. So that's wow. the first meeting was she actually showed up at this Miss Fireball contest. <laughs> and so cool. Me when I won and uh, said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call you in a couple of weeks and we'll have lunch and discuss your career, sweetie. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. 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 That was my first meeting. Great story. Would you mind getting some questions from the audience? No, I'd love to. I'm coming out and doing this. I, I, told, I told this guy earlier that my husband, who was the uh, my real husband that I've been married to for 48 <laughs> flipping years, um, was actually the last person to make up Elvis Presley for his very last television show. He got the call two weeks before I was going to have our son. I was very pregnant, and he said, I'm going to go do Elvis Presley's makeup for his special. And I said, well, but I'm pregnant, I can't go. He said, who said anything about you? <laughs> I, if the baby starts to come, cross your legs. I'm going to do the thing. <laughs> All right, Desiree, uh, that's hard to intro. Let's see what you got. My favorite episode is when uh, Aunt Fran dies in the bathroom of the Bigger Jigger. And I was wondering why you guys wrote her out. Did she just not want to come back and do guest appearances anymore? or? Well, you know, sh uh, Mama's family was first on NBC for a season and a half, and they kept moving our time slot around. I mean, it got worse, ever worse 
every six months it got worse. We were all us at Magnum PI with Tom Selleck and they said, oh, well, they're doing too well there. So they moved, they moved us off as the love boat. They just kept putting us in horrible time slots till they felt like they had the ammunition to cancel us. And I think what the deal was, was that the young guys at the network just really didn't understand a young woman playing an old woman and they did not understand rural comedy. Uh, which are some of the best comedies. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, but they didn't get it. So we got canceled and sat for like a year and a half uh, before we went into syndication. Oh. Uh, first run syndication. And it was during that year and a half that I lost both Betty and Rue to the Golden Girls. Oh. Uh, I remember Makes Betty sense. saying to, to, to me, we, I ran into her on, I can't remember what show we were doing. I think it was a game show or something. She said, I just did a pilot and I really think this could be the one. And that was the Golden Girls. Oh, that's uh, awesome. So I lost both those girls to, you know, they went away to do that. Crappy <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite Christmas movie you watch every year? Oh, wow. That's a Christmas movie every year. I would have to say, well, we do watch Christmas Vacation almost every year, but of late, I think my favorite Christmas movie is uh, The Holiday. Oh, yeah. Holiday. 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 Was it fun working with Ken Berry? There were so many great Mama Vint moments. Ken Berry, I think of as my right arm. He's just there for you. He's like dancing with a great partner. He's just always there and always funny and so underrated. And I would have so many fans come up to me during the Mama's Family Run and say, Ken Berry's really good. And I would say, oh man, you guys should have seen him when he danced on the Carol Burnett show. He was just uh, and I think of like Derek Huff nowadays, and Kenny just kind of missed that window where he could have been just ginormous because he's really? so so talented. Yeah. Vinton. So working with Ken Berry and Tim Conway, how did that contrast comedy work? Completely <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, Ken is always there for you. Tim is God knows where Tim is. <laughs> <laughs> He lived to recap it. He lived to upset everybody. It was, and I didn't even know this until after the Burnett show. He was dyslexic. So he couldn't really, he had trouble reading the scripts and then deciphering the whole thing. So that's why he wrote a lot of his own stuff. He wrote all of those uh, Mrs. Wiggins sketches. <laughs> he wrote a lot of the stuff that he and Harvey did together. He wrote a lot of the dentist sketch. He wrote a lot of that stuff. Uh, because it was probably easier for him than learning a scrap. Um, but he was just a devil. And we used to do two shows on the Burnett Show. It was like a live show. We had an audience that was roughly the size of this room, probably about 250 people. And um, uh, if the first show went really well, the director would give Tim the okay to do whatever he wanted on the next show. So you got, you never knew what was going to happen. <laughs> you used to have cue cards back in the day, like, I don't remember, Carol was black, Harvey was green, Tim was red, I was blue. And if you looked out in the audience and saw a red cue card that said savor, that meant here comes the joke that nobody has heard before that is going to save the whole sketch. <laughs> and you, ne I mean, you would just fasten your seatbelt and go, okay, here we go. <laughs> yeah, at one point he had so many saver cards that he uh, wallpapered his office in it. <laughs> and many of the first years of the Burnett show, I didn't even see me cracking up at all. I just didn't feel it was my privilege. Uh, but when Mama came along, I got a little braver. And uh, the night that we did that particular sketch, when Tim got written into the family sketches, Carol the elephant. all aside and she said, you guys, you know how much I love these characters. You know how serious I am about these sketches. I do not want us breaking the fourth wall. We are going to keep our composure, keep it together, and serious. <laughs> so, and we did, you know, most of the time we did pretty well, but that particular sketch oh, came oh, along. Okay. And... You know what happened? Carol fell apart. She just, and here's this grown woman. She's in my lap, and she's looking up at me, and she's got tears, and she's—I mean, I'm just like, what the hell? Get a grip, for Christ's sake! And I'm keeping my composure because.
as I've been told by my boss, keep my composure. <laughs> anyway, we get through the dress show, the dress rehearsal show, which we used to do two shows. They were called Dress and Air, but that's only because Carol grew up in New York doing live television, and there was a dress and there was an air show because they went live. Um, so they do a dress rehearsal and then they do the air show. That's the way our schedule was set up. So on the Burnett show, you'd do the dress rehearsal at 4.15, you'd be done like at 6 o'clock, we'd have like an hour and some odd minutes to get your makeup touched up, to get uh, dinner if you're hungry. And during that time, you would get notes from the director about the next show. And it could be anything like, we're changing your mark in the finale. We're changing this line. We're changing the running order. It could be anything. So he came by my dressing room that night. He knocks on the door, Dave Powers, our director. He says, I have only one note tonight. The elephant story will be different and good luck. <laughs> so by now, this is like, I don't know what, that was like one of the, I think that was the last season of the Burnett Show, the 11th season. And I'm now married to Al. My husband, Al Schultz, was the makeup man on the show. So he's sitting in my dressing room when the director came by. And after the director left, I said, how the hell does he get away with it? And Al looked at me, he said, get him. So I think maybe it was Al that unleashed that monster that night. <laughs> I got him. <laughs> As we wait in line to meet Thelma, this guy's got the greatest shirt ever. I was supposed to do my photo with her tomorrow, but they said I can do it today instead as long as I've already paid for it. So, so this area, I have to download my photo. That was so awesome. This is the first time she's ever posed her photos, dressed as mama for really anywhere. She said, unless you were like on set, you might have got one, but that was so cool. I have the biggest grin on my face. It's so fun. And right over here is where you pick up your printout. Here's my free eight by 10. Great costume, Iola. Deadpool Grinch. All right, have a great time and a horrible Christmas. It's Pumpkinhead. Wow, they're giving tattoos here. Oh my gosh, Russ Trainer. Night of the Living Dead, I have to get a photo. That's a great option to choose from having trouble for the dimension center. Yeah, I think that one. Okay. Do it in this green paint. That's perfect. Oh yeah, no worries. It's gonna put J O R D A N. Yes. They're coming to get you, Jordan. <laughs> oh, he's even got the driving gloves. Signing it in green, that looks great. Johnny. That looks amazing. Thank you so much. And it dawned on me since I went and did the filming locations for Night of the Living Dead with Scott Michaels and I wish he could have been here for this. This is his uh, Christmas present. He's getting a signed photo from Russ as well. That's funny you just pointed out to me that she's running away while you're trying to help. Exactly. Scott Michaels, I hope you love that. That is so cool. my friends I think we are gonna call it a day for day one at Steel City Con we'll be back tomorrow to meet Chevy Chase Beverly D'Angelo the Undertaker and much more thank you all for watching please hit the like button please subscribe and we will see you all next time have a great night and goodbye